If you can hear me, please just give me a wave so we can begin the class. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so whilst we still wait for those who are still joining us, I'm briefly going to go through what I did with you last, the last time about the hypothesis, okay? So on the screen, I've shared to the screen for you. You should see examples of questions I intend to use. So you have example one and example two. I'm taking my time this time around to go through with you quickly. Now, what we did last week is to establish that people make claims about certain phenomena. And once those claims are made, what is left for us to do as researchers or as people who are interested in the case is to subject those claims into some statistical analysis to prove or otherwise reject that claim. That is the whole idea about hypothesis testing. In our examples, we are looking at a situation where we want to pick samples of questions from different, different, different places and to use some statistical means to ensure that those statements are true. So for every example that we solve, we are using some statistical assumptions, okay? Then we go further to either prove the statement right or otherwise reject the statement. And I said that anytime we are doing this, we are looking at a population. And because population is large and we can't reach out to everybody, we take sample from the population. Once those samples are representative enough, use it to test the statement that has been made. At this point, these statements or the statements that are purported to have been made, we have to represent them hypothetically. And by doing that, we're saying that you need to always state your now and the alternative hypothesis. Once that is done, you should, for surety, you know the exact claim that has been made. Then go ahead to use the statistical sample. That is the data or information you have and use it to test for the hypothesis. This is going to be a brief example that we can jump onto our discussions today. So please pay attention. Now, what I want to say is that if I'm doing a step or I'm on a, a step and you don't understand that step, I'm giving you the opportunity to ask question. Don't wait for me to finish. Then you say the whole show. I don't think you'll be fair to me or fair to your friends if you insist that I should do the whole show. So I implore you, to ask the question whilst I'm going through the step-by-step -step so that we can have a fruitful discussion. And today I'm gonna to take my time. I will go on a slow pace so that you follow uh, methodologically, okay? So we can all do the work <laughs> carefully. Okay, so in stating your null or alternative hypothesis, I have intimated that the claim that is always made is your null hypothesis. And by way of ensuring that the statement or the null hypothesis is what you are writing, I said that you need to bear in mind the equality sign. So for all um, share screen. Let me take this. For all. HO, which is the null hypothesis, 
you need to bear in mind that whatever you formulate goes with either equal to less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Then for alternative hypothesis, they goes with the non equal to sign greater than or what less than. So watch the statement carefully. If it is talking about at least at most, you remember those uh, statements we made when we're doing the linear programming. It's the same thing here. So if I want to say that a population, that's the population mean, I can say that it is less than or equal to the number of or whichever population that I'm using, if it is 25, and I state this, then my alternative hypothesis is surely going to be mu is what? Greater than 25. Okay. If I also state that my now per the population mu given is equal to, let's say, 120, then the alternative will be mu is not equal to 120. And you get this information from the question or the problem that you are dealing with. Similarly, I can say that my HO, so you first have to write the HO first, and that will take you to the alternative hypothesis. Mu is also greater than or equal to maybe 150. Then the alternative, mu is less than 150. When you state this, you first have to indicate the null hypothesis. Then the alternative hypothesis will follow. I hope this is, this is clear at this point. Once we state this, the next thing to do is to identify the information that you have. And we said that by doing that, we need to know which of the statistic hard tool to use based on the information or the problem that we have. Therefore, we talked about a Z-test statistics or a T-test statistics yesterday, last Saturday. We said that we use Z-test, okay? If the sample size N is greater than or equal to 30, then we use the t-test if the sample size you are dealing with is less than 30. And if it is the z-test you are going to use, okay, then you need to understand how to estimate using the z-test. I would say that by way of writing a formula, we just have to say that we have to identify the sample mean from the data we have, the mean, that's the population mean we have, the sample standard deviation or the population standard deviation, then the sample size. These are the information you need to represent in the z-test formula. So we say that is a z bar, x bar, sorry, minus the population mu divided by the standard deviation, which is also dividing the sample what size. Please let me make a statement here. If ever in a problem you don't see the population mu, please assume that the population mu is zero. So it's going to be x bar minus what? zero. If you follow, it give me a wave so I can move on to the next one. This is when we're saying that we are using a sample size that is greater than 30 or equal to 30. So we are using the Z test. Z test. Can I continue? Give me a wave if I can continue from here. Perfect. Then if the sample size is also less than 30, or we are saying that we are dealing with small sample size, then we say, let's use the t-test. And by t-test, we are saying that it's also equal to, and I explain n minus one as degrees of freedom, which we'll be looking at soon, very soon. 
x bar minus the mu divided by, you see, is the same thing. Just that here you are using the sample standard deviation, that is s, divided by the sample size. This formula is basically the same as we have here. Just that the way we need to decide on rejecting or accepting the null hypothesis will be a different caveat, okay? My friends, once we've established these two, these two formula, we use it to determine the test statistic from the data that we have, the test statistics. Good. Once we do this, we need to compare, as I said, in order to either reject or accept the null hypothesis, we need to compare a certain values of numbers to this calculations that we have done here. That's all we need to do. Compare what you have here from your test statistic. Then we are going to use what we call the normal distribution table, which will also give us a certain value. And we are comparing those values to the test statistics. Once that is done, we can go ahead and use the rule of thumb. How do we do that? I gave a table for everybody to have access to. Matilda, please, have you shared it? Yes, sir. Perfect. So we, we use the table, this guy here, which is a standard normal distribution table, to estimate another number or another values and compare to the test statistic. And we call those values, as I said, Z, the critical values critical values, okay? Or we use what we call the p-value. And I said that you'll be given, and as the assumption is that there is the possibility of error term that you have to uh, make out of the data that you use it. So we call that alpha, which is known as the significance level. We need the significance level to compare that value to a probability value. Then we can accept or reject HO. Similarly, we need a critical value here, compare it to the test statistic that we have. Then we can decide to also accept or reject the null hypothesis. Once this is established, the rule of thumb is that if, if the test statistic you have here, so let me write on top here, let me maximize this. My Z test statistic, okay? If that is, okay, if that is greater than, or equal to my Z, my Z critical okay, Z critical value, what we say that we reject the null hypothesis. We reject the HO. That's all. The otherwise, if Z critical is less than that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That is all the information you need as far as either rejecting or accepting the null hypothesis. Usually we say we, we fail to reject. Okay. Then we also say that there is a p-value. So there are two approaches. Let me indicate it. Either we are using the critical value approach or the p-value approach. The critical value approach is where we compare the z-test statistics to the, the value we read from the table, which is the critical value. We compare the two of them. And I said, if z-test statistic value is greater than the z-critical value, reject HO. If z-test statistic is less than z-critical value, 
we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Then we have the p-value approach. Let me write that one to here. P-value says that you are giving alpha value of a certain level, either 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.025. You are comparing this to the corresponding probability value of the test statistics you've computed. And we said last week that you also do that by using the 